Yeah, it's um, had a good week in the Senate. Uh, perfected a number of things. We have a lot of things that uh, I sent to fiscal oversight that will third read uh, probably Tuesday when we get back. Um, in bills relating to veterans and, and um, veteran suicide and uh, lots of things to support veterans, some insurance bills, um, some bills, a, a, a big bill dealing, dealing with foster children and, and helping them uh, keep some of the benefits that are uh, owed to them. Um, so lots of good, you know, just I call them um, not not the not the tier one, not the bright line issues, but lots of other stuff, uh, mostly bipartisan votes and uh, folks working together to get to outcomes on uh, things that matter to the people of Missouri, which I think is what the, the Senate is designed to do. So um, seven seven weeks left. Um, you know, I, I assume the floor leader is not here, uh, but I assume we're going to talk about uh, the FRA and and um, maybe landfills maybe next week. And um, obviously we're we have the budget um, and or we don't have the budget yet. We are working on the budget, uh, even though we don't have it uh, entirely. But um, and obviously the the uh, uncertainty of the FRA obviously plays into that. So I think the uh, senator from Green, Senator Huff, appropriations chairman is working overtime to make sure to just to account for any and all possibilities, um, but uh, we feel good about our chances. And um, I think we'll walk out of this session, regardless of how it started, um, with a little bit of uh, angst. I think it'll end well, and I think we'll um, we'll be able to look back and be proud of what we did. Uh, on the FRA, where is the, 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 the standalone to fund Planned Parenthood bill in the Senate? Are you going to do that first? The house, ver the, yeah, the house version is in the Senate. Uh, it has been referred, I believe. Um, I think it actually maybe has been reported the calendar. I think it's on our calendar, so we could go to that at any time. Um, and I presume we will. Um, obviously, you know, there'll probably be some folks who want to talk about that for a while. So we'll uh, see what happens there. But uh, yeah, it's 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 primed and ready to go. Does that have to go before the FRA? Well, I don't know that I think have to is probably the wrong uh, phrasing, but I, I think we'll probably my, my assumption is not putting words in Cindy's mouth. My assumption is we'll take a crack at it first. Yeah, the House's version uh, of the uh, initiative petition reform changes uh, was, was sent over. Given how much contention there was on that topic, what's your sense of that? You know, getting priority or moving through. Yeah, I don't know what was in the House version, so I can't really speak to that. Uh, my assumption is it had some stuff that ours didn't. Um, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll treat it like we do everything else. We'll get it to committee and, and um, we'll see what happens. I, you know, we're going to have, uh, like we always do at the end of session, especially in a year where we're working with the FRA and we're getting the budget pro pro potentially a week later than we normally do, there's going to be a bandwidth issue. So we'll. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. The House also just passed this morning the, uh, the bill that would uh, affect the, the management of law enforcement in St. Louis. Mm. Can you talk about the, your position on that and what you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a it's an interesting issue. I think obviously the the uh, there are some folks in St. Louis that are going to have something to say about that. I think it's probably not a universally um uh, supported position even amongst our caucus. Um, so and I can't. I, I, can't speak for everybody, but I do know there's some consternation there. So certainly not an easy lift, um, but we'll, you know, like everything else, we'll get it to committee and and uh, see what the will of the body is. Would, would you, you say that's a priority you, this year? Would you say that's a priority this year? Um, you know, it's, it's certainly, again, it's certainly not something that, I, the best that I can tell that the entirety of our caucus supports. And so, I'm sure it is a priority of some folks. I don't know that I would call it a, a universal caucus priority. I think you'll have some Republicans who, who are going to have some issues with it when it comes to the floor. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. When you say it's not a universal priority for our caucus, what is it? Uh, the, the state takeover of St. Louis Police. And so I do have another question sure. related to that. Um, should that police department have more time um, under the current structure um, to to um, do what it's doing before a change is made? Well, I think the, it was the it was part of the pitch that was made last year. Uh, Chief Tracy had just come in uh, literally weeks, I think, or maybe months before um, we went into session, or maybe it was even during session. And so that was their pitch last year, which I think was legitimate. 
um, you know, I think they could make the same pitch and, and probably would be uh, received well by some folks and maybe not by others. I think you do have – we know we have an ongoing public safety problem in St. Louis. That is a real problem. I, don't, I think anybody who says that's not true is, is frankly just not being honest. Um, you know, there were some comments made yesterday uh, on the floor, which I think are true and need to be a part of the discussion, which is we can be we can say that Republicans and Democrats want the city of St. Louis to be successful and thriving and growing. And for me, that is a true statement. But we also have to be honest about the fact that right now, none of those things are true. Um, you know, population is decreasing at a, at a, at a pretty alarming pace. I think it's down below 290,000, which is is sad and is not good for the state of Missouri. The state of Missouri is doing better, has to be doing better when St. Louis is doing better. So all of that to say, I think we have to be honest about the variables. I think anybody who stands up on the floor and just says everything's okay, let's stick to the status quo, um, is not doing their, their own city a, uh, uh, the, the proper service that, that they need. So all that to say, I don't know that uh, state control of, of, of St. Louis police is um, is going to happen this year or not, but it doesn't mean that we, we, we need to be talking about these issues and try to make sure that St. Louis is doing well. Do you think it should happen this year, the change? It's not up to me. Can you speak at all about if, if any, uh, if this affected anything, your withdrawal from the Secretary of State race, did that change any of the working relationships or dynamics amongst your members? I mean, we had a pretty good week this week, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think, um, you know, now there are, uh, before I got out, there were two, two senators in the Secretary of State's race. Now there are two senators and a speaker in the Se Secretary of State's race. So it's, it's different variables. I don't know if it's better or worse, but uh, better for me, but I don't know about anybody else. Um, where do you think child care stands in this session is it is that a last minute thing because of the, the problems um within the republic yeah i mean i i think it's going to be a part of a, a broader discussion I, I i think the notion that we would just get it done um in its its most uh, complete form um without it being part of a, kind of a broader package of things that that folks give and take on uh, you know i think is probably not realistic. So we're going to get to the end of the session. And we're going to get closer, approaching the end of the session, and we're going to have the budget. We're going to have the FRA. We're going to have child care tax credits. We're going to have uh, IP reform, right? So you know it, the way this place usually works is you you sit down with everybody, you strike a grand deal if it's possible, and everybody gets screwed a little bit and is happy for a minute, right? Like that's that's how it works. So I would hope that that um, that issue set is a part of that that discussion. I do think we need to do something. Speaking sure. of the end of session, um, with just a few weeks remaining, can you speak to anything uh, that you definitely want to see done in just the remaining time uh, you have in public? Yeah, session? I mean, yeah, the budget and the FRA are, are the, the top two things. Uh, you know, we're working hard on, on the education bill in the House. Uh, that, that was clearly a, a stated priority of mine. Um, and I, I feel good about where we're at there. Um, you know, otherwise, I think for me, it's keeping the place uh, you get those three things done, keeping the place uh, working well and accomplishing as many priorities as I can for my caucus members and, and for the Senate as a whole, I, I'd, I'd consider that a success. In the SB 727 hearing this morning, someone made the allegation that if someone had a sister who had a private school, they might benefit from having charters in Boone County. Do you see an <laughs> opportunity to personally benefit from charter schools in Boone County? <laughs> No, is the short answer. That's a that's new, that's a new one for me. Um, my sister is the principal of the school that my kids attend. Um, they're a Christian school that would never become a charter school because they'd have to give up a tremendous amount of autonomy and you know their ability to uh, teach uh, things that are grounded in faith. So they would. I can't imagine that they would ever do that. I've actually, frankly, never had that conversation with my sister. Um, but. Um, yeah, that, that's that's a new one. Um, but no, I, I think, um, you know, my my support for education reform has been well documented, has been long running um, long before. I think even my sister was in that role. I think she's maybe been in that role for about five years. Um, so, um, yeah, I just want kids to succeed. I don't care where they do it. With the it's just I'm sorry, with the primaries mostly set now, do you have any comment on the future of the Senate and how it will be reshaped? Yeah, it's going to be different. I mean, you know, I think uh, 
I, you know, I, I'm curious to see a lot of the a lot of the stuff that has happened over the course of the last six years happened uh, after um, then President Pro Tem shots and I assumed our leadership roles and kind of the fallout that came from that and the back and forth between the Conservative Caucus slash Freedom Caucus. You know, frankly, me leaving and and Senator Igel and Senator Hoskins leaving, I'm, I'm curious to see what the place looks like after that. Um, I don't know what it'll look like. There's a bunch of primaries that will, I think, determine that to some degree. But I just hope it, it you know, the, the Senate, I don't want the Senate to become the House. Um, I don't want the Senate to become a place where, uh, you know, things just get rubber stamped. And even the guy who's in the top spot, you know, I, I shouldn't I, I shouldn't have the power like the Speaker does to just say if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. This is a different place. Um, and uh it, it's different in a good way. So I hope I hope whoever's in these positions, I hope that, that those differences are maintained. I wanted to ask you about education reform, just a little bit more about it. Why do you think there needs to be reform done? Broad picture, why does something need to be done in the education field? Well, you know, we have just kind of, especially in Missouri, and I've talked to enough people now nationally uh, in other states, other Senate presidents and, and um, majority leaders and others that, it, it's always tough to do these things. It, it seems uh, abnormally tough in, in Missouri, I've come to find. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we've we've kind of just maintained the status quo for a really, really long time uh, and have just thrown more and more and more and more money uh, at, at uh, a system and not ever really thought a whole lot about if the system is working or not. And so, you know, my stated goal, and I've said this every time anybody's asked me, my stated goal is not to abolish public education and just make everything, you know, private and that, that's goofy and it's never going to happen. It's not even what I want. Um, I want public education to be functioning and hitting on all cylinders. And I, I want those schools to be museums where people can go and get the best education that uh, that they can get anywhere in the world in a public school in Missouri. That would be incredible because 90, 95 percent of the kids, you know, whatever the number is in, in statewide, they're going to traditional publics and there's nothing that we do here that's really ever going to change that. Right. So there, there is a, but, but I also want the other side to be functioning well as, as well. I think the implementation of more charter schools with more flexibility and more autonomy, I think is good. I think, um, you know, parents having access to, to uh, more ESA dollars to, to be able to have some choices there. It's all good. If, if all of those things were working in tandem uh, and working well together, this would be the best place in the country and maybe one of the best places in the world to educate your kids. That's the goal. Um, and so I, 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 I've always said I'm the guy that wants all of the above and I, I'm trying to drag the folks who kind of traditionally just sit up for the, the status quo. Come, come, come with me. I'm not trying to mess with you necessarily. I just want you to support kind of a, a more all of the above approach instead of just saying let's protect our fiefdom and everything else be damned. All right, guys, one more. Um, do you think the administration, the, the governor's administration, is trying to kill the uh, renovation of the Capitol based on what happened <laughs> in the committee today? Uh, I, think they, um, I think they have some concerns about the, the, the scope of the current master plan. I do think that. Um, and, and I've had some conversations with the governor about that. Um, I don't think they want I, – I, I'm not convinced they want to kill the project. I think they want the project to – probably look a little bit different and probably cost a little bit less. I think those two things are probably true. Um, but, you know, uh, you, you were there, um, you know, the, the, the Cody Smith and I and, and some others on that committee, as far as legislators go, this is kind of our last crack at, at moving the needle. Uh, and, and there's a lot of work to do. Representative Berenger talked about, you know, the, the specifically in the House, a lot of uh, lack of ADA accessibility and, you know, that this, this place, this is a great building, um, but it could be a lot better. So uh, ho hopefully, whatever the, the, the issues are, we can get worked out and, and keep the needle moving and, and uh, get get something done. All right, thank you guys. Thank you all.